number three, which is consideration of the request from the Office of State Police for annual review and reauthorization of 82 LSP Trooper WNE positions effective October 1, 2024 through September 30, 2025. And uh, Colonel, I assume you're going to be the spokesman this time? Or? Yes, sir, that's correct, Mr. Chairman. And Mr. Chairman, I just want to give a brief intro on this on this item. Uh, behind tab three in your binders, you'll find a list of all the employees organized by their respective organizational units. With each number tab corresponding to a specific unit, uh, Deputy Director Dorsey has compiled this information, including a summary of the duties for each of the unit and the organizational charts that they developed. The requested WA positions are highlighted in yellow and have a big yellow star marking them on each chart for easy reference. And with that, I'll introduce our group. Thank you. So, a little historical perspective on the WAE, which is when actually employed Trooper. It was created in 2012. If you recall, it was under Governor Bobby Jingle's administration. We had some revenue challenges in the state. We had a recruitment challenge within state police because from September of 2008 to January of 2014, we did not, that's five years and three months, so you don't have to do the math, we did not hire a single Louisiana State Police Trooper. As many of you are aware, in 2018, we lost a lot of troopers to retirement. Presently, our numbers are under 900. We do have 55 set to graduate on October the 4th in a couple weeks. We have another class, as Executive Director Hammond discussed, that we're starting on October the 15th. I'm sorry, October the 20th, but we have 62 applicants pending. The physical and the psychological will start on that day. But our numbers to do the job across the state is understaffed. WAE Trooper, I didn't create it, but the reason why I understand and I express to you today the, significance import the significant importance of each one of those positions. We select men and women who retire from our agency, who have a certain set of skills in a specific area, investigations, patrol, support, who also did a good job a very good job while they were here. Their institutional knowledge is priceless. The $35 an hour that we pay them without benefits is a small amount given what they, what many could receive in the private sector. The fact that they want to come back and spend their time with state police and coach and mentor our men and women is incredibly important to me and the agency. More importantly, we cannot function without those 82 positions. The State Police Table of Organization is the same as it was in 1970. I'm quite certain our population has doubled to 4.57 million. Our roadways have expanded. Our interstates are no longer four lanes. They're six and eight lanes. The number of vehicles on the road have increased. And from a good thing, we have a lot of tools and technology we use in law enforcement, but that requires review by troopers not reviewed by AI or a bot or a program or an algorithm. It still requires a trooper. These troopers, these WA troopers, understand our policies, our procedures, our expectations. They're post-certified in a specific area. When you think about operations, when you walk into one of our 10 patrol troops, there's a sergeant sitting at the front desk along with the WAE trooper. We have to have that presence there. I, we, as an agency, don't have the personnel to staff that right now. We're getting there, we're recruiting, we're hiring, and the goal one day is to have the WAE's numbers decrease. But right now, due to our personnel shortages, we can't function without them. Quite frankly, I don't know how the agency would operate with, without them. The review of body-worn camera, the number of public records requests, the interaction with the public, because we're a front-facing agency and we're 24-7 at the front desk of a troop, patrol troop, our investigative offices, office is very demanding. People want to speak to a trooper. You say, well, 
I just, why don't you hire a civilian to do it? Or why don't you hire a non gun soldier? Well, they don't understand state police operations. They didn't spend 20 or 25 or 30 years with our agency. They don't know the protocols. They don't know the policy, the procedures. They don't have experiences to provide the high level service that the public demands. Therefore, the WA troopers, whether they're in patrol, whether they're in investigations of support, help fill that gap and help us provide a level of service that the, we demand and the public expects till I can get these ranks filled with new troopers. With your help, we will continue to recruit and retain the best, passing and approving our recommendations for minimum standards to keep them elevated, doing a post-class only, which starts very soon, attracts more men and women to the ranks of state police. But in the interim, to stay on topic, that WAE trooper is critical. To say that we're giving it to only favorites and people we know or like, or it's a, uh, a favor to someone, is just categorically false. These employees are unclassified. And anyone who's been around me since my appointment January 8th understands that we are a performance and results driven agency. And if you don't deliver and work and complete the expectations, the assignments and tasks that we give you, we will give you notice and you will no longer be employed. So the fact that it's unclassified is a good thing because if they don't meet the standard, we won't have to go through a commission meeting to make a determination to tell them you have two weeks to improve your performance. There are others that we will have in your place to do the job. But again, they were selected by the command staff, by their captains, the sections and troop commanders, because they have a skill and a work ethic that we can utilize in our agency and provide that service. They already met the background, the minimum qualifications, they share years of experience, almost to the point where they're subject matter experts in their field. The request for the 82 to be renewed is critical to operations. We cannot function without them. My goal, again, is to reduce that number. As we expanded Troop NOLA, I had to add a few more. As we expanded a couple sections recruiting within state police, we expanded our TEEP, which is our Troopers and Employee Assistance Program. So let's talk about the, the Lieutenant Melissa Mady, because Myself, my command staff, and those behind me, we represent all the Louisiana State Police. No one is selected because of who they are, but it's what they bring to Louisiana State Police. And Lieutenant Melissa Mady, who spent 18 years with Louisiana State Police and seven years with the Harbor Police in our public affairs section and retired as a lieutenant because her husband, who's also in law enforcement, took a job as supervisory special agent with the Homeland Security in Athens, Greece on an international deployment with their family. Melissa has a very unique set of skills and education that others in our agency do not have. Specifically, Melissa Mady is the founder of the DPS LOSS, or Local Outreach for Suicide Prevention Team. She's put extensive training and personal experience into that program. Lieutenant Mady created and continues to coordinate the agency's loss team, providing valuable support to employees and surviving family members. So of course one's gonna ask, how do you do that far? Let me pause for a minute and just remember how important personal well-being and officer well-being and trooper well-being are for our employees. Law enforcement officers have long been overlooked. We face the same challenges that you face. Being on scene, crime scenes, shifting from day shift to night shift, to being around things that change your well-being. We've had suicides. We've had those who need significant help. Since the inception of this program in 2023, the LOST team has physically responded to over 12 employee-related suicide 
completions or attempts. Melissa Mady, resulting in 80 contacts in the first four months of this program. 80, that's within our agency of 2,600 DPS employees, which includes, if you include the cadets, just over 900. She developed a survivors of suicide peer support group. She held, holds this virtually online. The reason for that is not to benefit WA Troop of Melissa Mady, those who are seeking help. They don't have to leave and walk into an office where someone sees you getting counsel. They can do it remotely in the comfort of their own home or another location where they can seek help and guidance in their time of need. We need to protect those that work for us. Melissa Mady has that skill set. Some might ask, how is it a secure signal? Well, thankfully, we have a partnership with our State Department, and our virtual private network line is secure because her husband, as a law enforcement officer, already has that in their home because of his job at Homeland Security Investigations, which I know is under the Department of Homeland Security, HSI. Melissa provides that to our men and women in our agency, both commissioned and non-commissioned. Trooper well-being is incredibly important to not only me, but everyone in the agency. We also assist those who have retired from our agency. We don't forget them. And those who have separated service, even on good terms or bad terms, before retirement. Lieutenant Mady provides that. In addition, if you all recall, we had a storm last week. Hurricane Francine, she's eight hours ahead in Athens. Guess what, when I go to bed, she can watch social media and public information. One might ask, well, don't you have a fusion center? Yes, we do, and they're 24-7. And they look for threats to public safety. But our image and the trust that we're building in the community is equally important. So when I put my head down at night, I know someone's just waking up and watching Louisiana State Police to make sure that someone doesn't post a story on a blog that's categorically false or misinformation, that we have knowledge of that so we can speak to it. More specifically, something happens at 10 o'clock at night and it starts going on a blog, one of the platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter X, Snapchat. By the time 5 o'clock rolls around, I'm on, our agency may not be able to recover from that because people don't want to hear the truth. They only want to hear what they've heard because it sounds good. And it's unfortunate, but that's the world we live in. Additionally, as you know, I have many speaking engagements. I have many conferences and things I attend. WA Trooper Melissa May, with her years of experience, helps provide talking points and research and analytics for me. She can do that remotely, as well as the team of lieutenant colonels that are on the command staff. Because I can't be everywhere, they also speak on my behalf. She provides a valuable resource to us. <clears throat> Personally, I'm very thankful that she would even consider remaining with us. As a mother of four children, who are young children, and living abroad, that you still want to commit to our agency and provide your expertise and share your knowledge to better us, is welcome. The work that she does for us, although done remotely, she comes in every three months. She does engagements here with the team. She's coordinating our fourth annual Women of Law Enforcement for the Department of Public Safety, which takes place next month, includes Louisiana State Police, Wildlife and Fisheries, and State Fire Marshal. Well, we have two days of our women police officers, troopers, deputy fire marshals, and agents from wildlife who get together and talk about things that are important to women in law enforcement. WA Trooper Mady is planning and preparing all of that. But it's much more than just a two-day event. It's a year-long process to increase our ranks of women, and ladies, because they serve a significant role in state police. I don't want to continue to carry on. I think I've made my point, but I will take questions regarding any WAE position that we have. And I would just hope that y'all would trust in me and those behind me and my command staff that we're making the best decisions for Louisiana State Police. 
and public safety in the state of Louisiana, being a good steward, steward of our budget, and constantly holding those accountable who work for our agency at every level, even in classified positions. Just real, I know yeah. the, uh, yeah. the renewal form as an example for the, the one we just approved for the applied technology that their direct supervisor is a uniform troop, in this case a sergeant. That, that's the case for all the WA they're supervised directly by your department. Yes, sir, that is correct. And I would presume that that ensures that they're actually doing the job for which they're hired, right? Yes, sir. So they don't work on their own. They don't work unchecked. But they have direct supervisors who monitor their hours, monitor their production, monitor the quality of their work, and monitor their overall performance. Is that, would that be accurate assumption on my part? Yes, sir. And just, just to further clarify, that's the only, of the 82, that's the only one that works remotely Although we may have two others that live in other states, when they come back and work two or three days a week for us, they're under our driving program. Y'all may or may not be aware, but Louisiana State Police is tasked with compliance for all of the driving programs for the young teens, the driving schools. We, we approve that curriculum. We check on those to make sure that they're following the driving standards that our young men, our young boys and girls who are first-time licensees are getting their respective training in compliance with Louisiana State Police and the laws that are written in place on the motor vehicle for both the written tests, the number of hours behind the wheel. Y'all are probably aware it's, it's 32 hours in the classroom, it's eight hours uh, in behind the wheel, and then of course upon completion of that first portion then you have to do an additional 50 hours for, um, prior to receiving a full license. So two of our troopers don't reside in Louisiana anymore, but they come in town and work two or three days a week overseeing that program for us. There's a total of six that do it. It's just amazing how the mind wanders when, when people have free time or people are envious of others. Every job that we do is critically important for public safety. And I, under my leadership, as I said earlier, we're constantly monitoring and observing what our men and women are doing because quite frankly, I don't have enough personnel for anyone to be sitting around clicking online or not doing their job. And in many professions, not just public safety and state police, it always looks like someone else is doing nothing until you sit in their seat and actually do the job that they do. I won't begin to question any other profession and what they do because I'm not sitting in that role. And I would just ask the respect of the members and those, the public, to give us the trust that you expect us to give you in your job and your occupation, as opposed to being so critical of one that you've never served in. With respect to Lieutenant Mady, do you feel like you're sufficiently able to monitor her performance despite the location of her remote work, ensure she meets your expectations. So that's the genius of technology, sir. Our system, our Mark 43, shows when you're logged on, shows your emails, shows when you're on our commute, uh, computer automated dispatch, our records management system, it all has a date and time stamp. Although it's eight hours ahead, you're able to account for work that's performance standards that are clearly outline that we can see and check on to see the work and products that anyone does remotely or in person even if I'm not physically watching them in their office or their place of work whether it's an investigation to support or like the applied technology spot whether it be traveling their sign up rosters their sheets you know when they're there because someone had to certify sheriff's deputies and police officers so even when they work like the driving schools they, and, and the motor vehicle inspection stations, you know, the decals on your vehicles, I know that's contentious with some of us in the public, but we have to go and inspect those stations. There's checks and balances in place for all of those things, and technology provides for that. And uh, working remotely for WA Trooper Melissa Mady is no different. And do you find any impediment to her remote location, as if it were in, in Athens, Greece, or Bogalusa, or Covington? anything you found that diminishes her ability to do her job remotely from 
where she's located. As opposed to if she's anywhere else in the state. No, sir. Thank you. Colonel, there's a couple of comments that you made that I, I want to make note of. And um, I don't have agreement with you on those. One, you made a comment that uh, you hope this approval of WAEs is going to be a temporary thing, that we're looking for that number to go down. This commission has on multiple occasions expressed that saying, before your time and <laughs> tenure in the position, and maybe even after your tenure, in the, the, we'll still be saying that because we do desire that there be full-time commission officers doing these tasks. And I, I'm not I'm not ignoring the practicality of what you're dealing with, but I do want to express that we appreciate that expressed desire and, and the effort that it will be made to keep moving in that direction uh, is one of the comments. The other comment you made was not directly about WAEs, but you also commented on uh, state troopers trying to make sure that uh, women are properly part of the state trooper population and that uh, the efforts that y'all are doing to try to make sure that we have improvement in those numbers. You take a look at the population of state troopers, and I'm not saying it's anybody's fault in particular, but it's not representative of the gender of, of, of our state. Which brings me to uh, a WAE related issue, and it's been a month or so since I looked at these stats, and I might be off by a, a number or two, but it was shocking to me the number of women that are not WAEs. I think there are two, if I remember the number correctly. Um, and I'm just wondering if there's not something we could do to try to address that going going forward as we look. Obviously, you want to get the best people. I'm not saying we don't get the best people, but we also have to be cognizant of, of the optics of something something like that. And I know, in part, it's based on the historical nature of who fills w, WAs. The state troopers have historically not had representation of women near proportionate to their representation in our community. And so if you're taking retired troopers, that's going to, by definition, have that negative impact. But I would be remiss if I didn't bring that up and as something that we need to take a look at as, as an organization. Yes, sir. As a father of two daughters, I know you important. So, so well, I got three of them, sir. <laughs> it's, uh, but uh, for the record, I'll say with many people, outside of our agency or outside law enforcement are probably unaware, what differs from Louisiana State Police as opposed to a local sheriff's department or police department is that we work in patrol, which is the majority of our troopers. We work nights, weekends, and holidays. We work every other weekend. Our state police academy traditional is 24 weeks, although the law enforcement is 14 weeks. You're required to arrive on a Sunday and then return home on a Friday afternoon. That's a hardship for many women who have a traditional family, have children, and it's very difficult. So that, because of the nature of our job duties and our responsibilities, it's unlike a local sheriff's office or police department that has eight hour shifts or has more positions at their headquarters. We're a state agency, our headquarters is in Baton Rouge. We don't have as many support jobs outside of Baton Rouge. So when you we recruit statewide, and in rural areas and other other troops across the state, they just don't have as many investigations positions or support positions, which provide a, a better uh, uh, how you want to say balance between work and home life that they do here in Baton Rouge. And but we're but that doesn't mean we don't continue to work toward to your point, Mr. Chairman of recruiting our women both in the WAE program and on on full-time status as a state police trooper. We, we make, we do, I have a captain of recruiting sitting behind me. He knows how passionate I am about recruiting. That's why we, we with your approval, we created an entire command. If, well, you can't say you're serious when you have two people, when you have a captain, a lieutenant, sergeants, and troopers recruiting across the state. That kind of shows you you have a vested interest in, in recruiting. <coughs> And, and I think our group of men and women are in that section are doing a fine job. And we just want to keep improving and building up the ranks so we can get to that number where not only WAs can come down, but our public can feel 
have just so that much more trust in the operations that we have the number that we need to do the job effective, effectively and efficiently across the state, not just in one area of the state. Thank you. Any, any others? Do we have any motions? I'll make a motion. Go ahead. I'll make a motion. We accept uh, the colonel's uh, recommendation and his staff, all the WAEs uh, that's listed in this book. I will second. Any further discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you, Colonel. We'll move to item six on the agenda. Consideration of the recommendation from the executive director in accordance with SPC Rule 3.10 to move forward with the development and acceptance of a two-year professional services agreement with NEO Gov to modernize the cadet, cadet application and recruitment process. Can you give us, you want to tell us what that means in English? Sure. The executive director, Mr. Chairman, if I could just make one thing for the record to clarify. Retired Lieutenant Melissa May is a current WAE trooper assigned to our public affairs section, and she is an active employee. She has not been terminated, as stated online. I think for the record, I think everyone needs to know that. It was said that she was hired without authorization, which clearly that was stated by Executive Director Hanneman. In, in the temporary rule, as well as she was not terminated. She's an active employee working for us right now and did an incredible job during Hurricane Francine on behalf of the agency for us. Thank you. Thank you.